Okay, in our video series, the next thing that we want to cover is the greatest fear of any ag teacher. It's walking out into that greenhouse, looking at your basket, and realizing that your basket has friends. That there's little creepy crawlies, that there's little critters, and suddenly the panic sets in. What in the world do I do? My baskets have bugs. Yeah, that, that, that's a real concern because they're, not all of them are easy to control. There's several ways to, to help monitor that ahead of time, and that are yellow sticky cards that you can put out. And you can use that to monitor white fly, aphids, fungus gnats, anything that can fly around. You can also make your own instead of buying them and simply get some pieces of plywood. They can be six to eight inches by a, uh, a foot tall. Give it several coats of Rust-Oleum yellow. Let it dry good and then just get a container of mineral oil and coat the surface of those and put them out in amongst your plant material. And when you walk by, you go over and bump that bench enough to shake it, that will dislodge some of the insects, particularly the white fly, and then you can tell what you're gonna have to deal with. The pests that you're gonna see in the greenhouse, white fly is the most difficult to control. You'll have thrips, aphids, and fungus gnats, which aren't a real problem. They're more of a nuisance than anything else. Those are the biggies. Outside, you can have the budworm. That's the caterpillar that uh, eats the flowers. And the best way to tell about that is checking is look at your petunia blooms. And if you begin to see little holes in the blossom, then you know you've got the budworm and you want to have that basket sprayed, preferably with a systemic type insecticide. For the, the budworm, if you are wanting to go organic, there is one thing, and this is the one thing where I'm going to name drop an actual, um, an actual pesticide. It's not really a pesticide. So the, the budworm, all of your customers that have petunia baskets are going to experience budworm by midsummer. So they're going to call you up and say, my basket is beautifully green, but there's no flowers. So the first thing you should have them do is go out and look if there are remaining flowers, are there holes in them? If there are, you're going to send them to the store and they're going to purchase a biological control spray. That biological control spray is called B, as in Bob. Capital B. Yep. And then T, as in Tom. Small so T. BT. That stands for Bacillus thuringiensis which is actually a bacteria that attacks the worm itself. So the way that works is you spray that all over your plant. It's in the little spritz bottle. It lands on the leaves, it lands on the flowers. That caterpillar comes along and it consumes uh, those uh, bacterial spores in addition to the plant material. And then those bacteria replicate inside the gut of the caterpillar. And then they replicate so much that they actually shut down the internals of the caterpillar so the whole it, it's really pretty insidious it is because it is. the caterpillar eats that the bacteria produces a waste product which forms a crystal that crystal grows longer and becomes very needle-like and punctures the gut of the caterpillar which kills it and when that happens of course the caterpillars are mostly water if you've ever squished one so you will find caterpillars if you look really close and it, it usually takes uh, by about two weeks, most of the caterpillars should be done, but you can find them. They'll be little, small, and all shriveled up. But BT or Bacillus thuringiensis, uh, that spray is a biological. It is not harmful you, to you or your pets. It is safe to use uh, around other things. The only thing it's going to target is that caterpillar. The caterpillar, yeah. And you want to do what we call prophylactic sprays, preventative sprays, every couple weeks. And the emergence of that caterpillar's adult is a moth, which is nocturnal, and they will go over the bottom of the leaves or deep in the foliage, so they're going to be kind of hard to find. If you see the holes, sometimes you get a bad infestation, you look down underneath the basket and there's a lot of frass from the caterpillar, so you know you've got a serious problem. But they can defoliate or deflower the basket in a day or two and you won't have anything left. Uh, good, safe pesticide to use. It does have a shelf life, mm -hmm. uh, so check the bottle. Uh, it sometimes comes in some liquid containers that you would dilute, but check the expiration dates on those before you purchase them. It's in a, a hand spray bottle in most places. You take that, shake it up, 
spray it on, you're good. Uh, again, yeah, new bottle pretty much every year. Uh, they run anywhere from seven to twelve dollars for a cost, which is negligible for what you're doing. Uh, one other thing I did want to talk about as far as the monitoring cards is you did talk about, and I'm just going to hold up something of a particular color, this bright yellow. So your bright yellow color that you used on the cards works great for white fly, works great for aphids, but there's another color we should be bringing in there that yeah. is very specific and targets one of our greenhouse pests. And that's blue card and that's for thrips. Now, part of your insect problem or prevention includes weed control. Mm -hmm. You got to keep all the weeds off the floor of the greenhouse. You can use glyphosate, aka Roundup, in a greenhouse. It's labeled for that on the floor areas to kill plant material to keep things clean. But not while you have plant material in there that you want to sell. This is an off-season thing. Well, it can be done during the season too, but you got to be very careful that you don't have too fine of a mist so that it's going to come up and, and injure the plant material. The other thing is protecting entry into the greenhouse. And I've worked with a, co a grower, in fact I still help him from time to time that lives nearby, he has a tremendous thrip problem. But his greenhouses are sent in the middle of a grass field. And once the grass begins to harden and, and become, comes up in the boots and up the flowering, it gets tougher and the thrips move and migrate with the wind. Now you can buy a screen to put over your inlet louvers or sides that is small enough to keep them out. <coughs> but uh, that may be more money than you want to spend. It's pretty cost prohibitive. It's pretty expensive for a school to be able to so, put that in. In case you can't do that, make sure that the grasses and the weeds and everything are controlled outside of the greenhouse. <clears throat> I had a problem from a commercial house that I had to go call on and he was complaining that the soil mix that we made contained weeds. <coughs> Excuse me. So I walked in the greenhouse, took a look at what was there, and it became evident pretty soon the first end of the greenhouse there weren't too many weeds, but the closer we got to the air inlets, the thicker the weeds came. I looked at the weeds, identified them, walked outside, and there were three foot high weeds from those same species outside. So we've got to keep the weeds and the grass down outside your inlets. Yeah. So that's just a couple of brief things as far as uh, pests in your greenhouse. Um, really, when it comes to pests, because labeling and chemicals uh, and uh, permissions to spray and licensing, because that varies all across the state, we're not going to recommend anything to you besides the BT. Um, so really with that, you need to talk to your local county agent and have them come out and work with you in your greenhouse and they'll tell you what chemicals are current and labeled for your area, things that do or do not require an applicator's license, and those that you can actually have around your students and what the right re-entry times may be. And also if you're in the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington, and Idaho have got together and they put handbooks for weeds, insects, and disease control handbooks and they're reproduced new each year with the new updated info. You don't have to buy new ones every year. You can use them for two or three years and be in pretty good shape with it. And you can keep up to date on the chemicals by contacting either your county agent, as Matt mentioned, or your local agricultural chemical supplier. I hope that answered some of your questions on the pests. Sorry I couldn't give you any specific uh, chemical names, but again, depends on situation, pest, and location. All right, so stay tuned. We're going to have a few more videos for you shortly.